February 9th, 2013, or as I like to say, 213. You can dance with Joe and, uh, and his buddy Denver and the Mile High Orchestra. You can do that. We need to... Um, <laughs> We're not going to be able to put that together right now. Has this ever happened to you? Two minutes before you go on the air as a talk show host, your computer crashes and all the stuff you had prepared goes out the window, and you have to wing it with little hand puppets for three hours? Has that ever happened to you? Well, um, And if but, you happen to have a hand puppet... <laughs> But uh, we're so good at what we do that you won't, it's so you won't even seamless. notice, right? You won't even notice. It's so seamless. <laughs> you will think hand puppets were part of the show. Like a knife through hot butter. We're just scheduled slick. from eternity. Um, but you can indeed dance with Joe the Engineer on February 9th, 7 o'clock, Saturday night. Wellington Amphitheater. I'm not getting a lot of juice through here the way it normally uh, normally oh, works. There. It's a little Control. staticky. The who? The, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I, I hear myself bouncing around this more than I This one in the middle is all the way to the right. Oh, don't hand puppet that. time, hand puppet well, time. Well, hand puppet, well, deal with it at the break. Okay. okay. So on Saturday, as I was saying, February 9th, 7 p.m., Wellington, Florida Amphitheater, eh, 30, 40, 50 miles, 50 miles north of here, maybe. No, it's not that far. Wellington? I bet you it is. No. How far is Wellington from here? How many miles? How many kilometers? It's about 28 miles from my house to here. Okay, okay. So 28 miles. That's almost 50. I was thinking kilometers. Uh, <laughs> of course, they know where here is. That's yeah, true. Right, exactly. Well, here is here. The BBC. The it's just the 57th floor mind, really. of the BBC Towers. Yes, we're on top of the towers, looking down at the tiny Trump buildings below us. Um, <laughs> the Wellington Amphitheater tickets um, and info. Denver and the Mile High Orchestra. Who is Denver and the Mile High Orchestra? Pretty cool uh, gospel group. Um, Denver's uh, a great, uh, I don't know much about music, but a, uh, not a soprano. Yeah, what would it's not be? the tenor? Jersey boys, tenor, you don't what know it? what's happening, Tenor, right? is a tenor, okay. Yeah, I have tenor, one of four. Tenor. One of four. It wasn't a soprano, it wasn't a baritone. Tenor, and what's the other one? Soprano. Soprano? Ooh, that's Alto. Female. Alto. Alto. How's that, how's an alto You different? get an alto soprano, you get them all. Actually. You get them all. The, the bass. And um, and the doy doy Mark guy would know that for sure. <laughs> so on February 9th, seven o'clock, get your tickets. Uh, Wellington Amphitheater, the First Baptist Church of Wellington, fbcwellington.com, or just call. You ready? Oh. Remember the number five six one. What? Get train report. Oh, train report, traffic report, Mike. <laughs> Uh, more sand going north for fracking. For fracking sand. More fracking. Fracking, fracking sand. <laughs> fracking sand, more <laughs> sand and gravel going north. Where is uh, Matt Damon when you need him? Um, where is Matt Damon when you need him? First, uh oh. What? It's good. Okay. First Baptist Church, Wellington, 561 793 5670. That's pretty easy to remember. Say it again. Area code is Palm Beach County, 561. Mm -hmm. 793. How would you remember those three numbers? Uh, lucky seven. Seven, nine. 79. You got to stick to 79 somehow. Nine. President Obama's IQ, 79. Plus, uh, he's going to serve no, for three terms. No, lucky seven plus seven shy of 100. Okay. So 793, and the next one's easy. 567, zero. Okay. A cloverleaf sitting on a three Three-legged stool. There you go. <laughs> FBCWellington.com for Denver and the Mile High Lucky Orchestra. Stuff. We're going to play a little bit of music next week uh, of those guys. Hi, I'm Tom Trento. WNN 1470 on your AM dial, but that's not the only way you can listen. You can even, as Mort says, uh, what does he say, CJ? We are what? We are... Pictures for no. the radio for your eyes, pictures for your ears, and information for your survival. I like that. Radio for your eyes, sort of a play on uh, play on reality. Radio pictures for your, for eyes. your ears, and information for your survival. Yes. Yes, it is. Let and Mort, me know when we get to that. Mort will be calling in shortly because uh, we are going to launch the Mortzart contest today. Get that going. <laughs> And um, uh, with me today is CJ sitting over there. We'll have another guest in uh, the next hour. 
Uh, he's going to be uh, with us. He's instead of us just doing spots about the best lawyer in Florida, he's coming in here. So Peter Feynman will be in here in the second hour, and we may even let him play on this side of the microphone a little bit. Uh, but um, we are also on iHeartRadio, and you really need to, anybody dealing with any radio of any sort, you need to download iHeartRadio. Whoever the guys were that invented that little device. Oh, that's cool. That's that is cool. really well, cool. That's Clear Channel. So, um, uh, well, it's the app. Yeah, it's by, the app, yeah. The, the application. But they, they it's, it's, uh, they, they well, it's not Clear it. Channel. It's actually an iHeart app that they built for a lot of radio stations like Glenn Beck. I think Clear Channel built it, though. Do you? I think so. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's what I heard. Uh, I wouldn't put it past those uh, slimy Clear Channel guys. <laughs> Um, had some bad experiences with Clear Channel. Uh, they fired me once, but that's okay. No big deal. Uh, you're nothing if you haven't been fired by Clear Channel. So um, uh, what are we doing? Uh, we got. Let me see with this other stuff. I'm f trying to find a home for this thing in our awkward television radio studio. Steve Kane, yes, you got to listen to Steve and, and Brian in the morning. I was listening this morning, CJ, to yes. Brian and and uh, and. Um, Steve, mm -hmm. and I had to. If you notice, I got a haircut. I do. Yes. Yeah. Um, because because you're I going away. And I haven't got a haircut. I, I got a good guy, right? Not far from. No, well, leave yeah. it the way it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's Come on, I'm, I'm gonna grow it out to a ponytail. You and Mike should have like a contest. I'll uh, get my haircut tomorrow. Are you? Are you, are you? really? Well, I was sitting I down. Didn't think so. I was sitting down at the at a Dunkin' Donuts waiting for the barber to open. And um, I got my earphones in. I'm working on my computer on iHeartRadio, listening to Brian and Steve. Mm -hmm. And they were ripping to shreds Alex Jones and the Mor oh, yeah, Pierce yeah. Morgan uh, interview the other day. Right. Um, uh, Alex Jones, you know, I, I he's got a nice cult following. He, he really does. does. Um, and I thought that maybe he, you know, even a even a broken clock is right twice. Mm -hmm. This guy's a lunatic, man. Yeah, um, and I know many of the people that like us. Some of them really like him, right? And um, I don't know. He was on Pierce Morgan, just going insane. He was losing it in a debate on uh, the Second Amendment. But in any event, um, Brian mentioned that uh, he made sort of a generalization uh, about talk radio in South Florida. He said, "Talk radio in South Florida blows. There's no good shows except ours, Steve. You know, except this." He hey, didn't say you. Steve goes, hey, Brian, what about Tom and, you know, your buddies in the... Oh, 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 that's right. I forgot about them. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, they're very good. Oh, no, no. So I wrote him a little uh, quick email. I said, thanks that we don't blow, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> so, uh, thanks but, for the endorsement, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we do a little different shtick than, than they do. They, they do classic talk radio where they get, you know, audio punching bags calling in. And um, and then just and it, it, it is uh, poetry in motion to watch some of these people just get sliced and diced by Steve and uh, and Brian. They do very good slicing and dicing. They do a very good job, definitely. Yeah. They're like the top chefs of slicing and dicing. Steve's been at it a uh, long time, long time. Um, and almost, he's been doing this almost as old. You're you were little. You were in diapers when Steve started. Let me put it that way. Uh, you and, are so kind. And, um, <laughs> and uh, well, we do a little different thing. I mean, we, we have sort of an ensemble here, and we do a lot of hardcore, okay. serious He's stuff. He's laughing. Yeah, yeah. Um, We're doing bad hand shots, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, look at that. Oh, nice. That was a nice transition. Mike, uh, we're, we're doing, a, for those of you watching on TrentoVision.tv. Oh, that's cool. I like that yeah, that favorite. was pretty cool. That was a cool transition. I missed it. You'll, um, it was sort of a cube transition. Yeah, cube transition you'll notice uh, that we're stepping it up on the video side because we're really producing a television show in a radio studio. And also the quality of the video looks is much better than it has been in the past. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. stepped it up except a bit. Except we won't be doing it on... Yeah, except it won't be here tomorrow and Friday. <laughs> Thursday and Friday. <laughs> Cause, we'll because because the techs are going out partying and drinking at bars. That's so what we're doing. Yep. Don't get used, don't get used <laughs> to don't what get, you're saying. Yeah, enjoy it today and then look forward to it next week. Next right? Monday. We'll yeah. be back. But it will be on iHeartRadio. Yes, we will be on the radio tomorrow. Uh, yeah. No, no video side because our two guys are going to. Um, I got it right here, going to a summit on Islam up in Orlando. 
starting Thursday at 7 o'clock, so they both have to leave in the morning. Um, at the First Presbyterian Church of Orlando, there will be a summit, and this is uh, basically going to be, um, I think, from a Christian perspective, as to how do we deal with the Islamic threat in the world from a Christian perspective. But it's uh, fascinating because some of the top um, people in the world that deal with Islam are coming in for this, like uh, Dr. Mark Drury from Drury, Reverend Dr. Mark Drury from uh, Australia. He's written extensively. I'm hearing feedback and things. And uh, Jay Smith, our buddy from England, Jay Smith, he goes to Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park in London all the time, and he will just stand there on a little ladder and debate and yell and fight with the jihadis. The guy has um, uh, there are stones in of... London? There's one, I think. Stones of uh, platinum. I mean, I've seen him in some pretty tough situations. So Mike and Mark are going there with a couple of other United West people. Some weird feedback, Mike. They're heading north. I am going a little further oh, north. We're all abandoning CJ. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Poor CJ. But you will hold down the fort with Joe and Peter, okay? You'll do us well, I'm sure. So we can get rid of that thing right and there. And if I don't. Oh, you will, oh, it's you me, will. It's me, it's me. And uh, it's him. <laughs> Mark goes, oh, the building's on fire. Oh, it's, wait, me. I have my flame lighting everything here, so... All right, so I'm ta- I talked about Steve. I'm looking at my little list here. I yeah. talked about iHeart. Uh, Mort contest. We're waiting for Mort to call in. Mort, you're going to call in. We're going to launch the contest. So if you're listening, let's do that. And the the web- one of the websites you need to go to to follow what we do here on Trento Vision is the United West. We, um, we, Who we is that organization? Yeah, why I've heard you of that plug before. your own? Yeah, I've heard of that organization. We before. never do. We don't plug our own organization. Um, the United West is pretty cool. Uh, people have said, you guys do better work than the United States government does in investigating jihadis in America, in many respects. Well, we have a lot more freedom. We actually have more freedom. They have more resources to, um, to go to the IRS and look people up and, you know, all, all of the information that's out there. But uh, they're limited in, in um, how they have to talk to people. There's no Miranda. You know, we don't have to provide Miranda or... Uh, full disclosure or anything to anybody. Well, you have we, to try to be accurate. Though. Well, and also if they if we want, if they if the if, if the full blooded Italian organization wants to go into a mosque, they got to get approval from their boss, their boss's boss, they the supervisor. The mosque. They they get, the and mosque then they got to ask the mosque so they can come in there. So it's it's. Uh, if if we want to to recruit someone um, of the Islamic faith and uh, have them go in and and develop intelligence and report it back, we can do that. You know, yeah, we don't have to have any warrants or anything. No. Just and get... in fact, you do. And well, you have them all over yeah, the country, yeah, but yeah. you're just not saying plus, where well, they are and where they yeah, are. You know, may, we maybe, have different maybe not. recording methods <laughs> than, yeah, than, maybe, than the other people not. do. Or we could just be making all of this up. That's right. Yeah. We're, we're making it up. Yeah, we're just kidding about It's just, about it's just all hand this. puppet time. Yeah. So the United <laughs> West is a educational organization in the counterterrorism world. We educate people on different things. And um, uh, and on the <laughs> Trento Vision side, we, um, we we are a propaganda outlet for, you should see all the stuff I got. You people are propaganda. <laughs> you're a hate people. You're a hate group. You're this, you're that. Well, yeah, whatever. Or, whatever you want to do. Or we're in a media war. Whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to label us. But, well, we uh, do a lot of education, and we had a very educational day yesterday. Yes, With and Rabbi uh, and and yeah. Rabbi Kavan called me today, yeah. and and just said, "Hey, we had a great time," and I said, "We did." And I got an email yesterday, after and for those of you who watched, um, and listened, uh, the rabbi came in, and and we were gonna we're the show we're doing today we were gonna do yesterday, but right. with the rabbi we got into some very interesting issues, and um, and I got an email from a uh, Jewish person. Uh-huh who is a secular Jew for the most part, mm-hmm. said, oh, my word, um, that guy can probably uh, make me. me a believer, you know? <laughs> he makes so much sense. He's so yeah. logical. Yeah. He's so clear. Yeah. I said, yep, yep, absolutely. As a matter so. of fact, as a matter of fact, um, I, was, I was actually thinking about it while I was making supper yesterday, and I realized 
um, because we're kind of joking a little bit about um, like people looking for microscopic bugs in their broccoli and things like that. Um, and I realized I said something during that part of the show that I really ought not to have said. Oh. And I'm not actually going to repeat it. Because uh, I don't want to compound it. But it didn't. It didn't strike any of us. We of missed any it. Significance. They went right over our heads. It was probably an internal Jewish thing that you shouldn't have said. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and if you remember I, what it was, you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, and I really ought not to have done it. And in fact, I called the person. <laughs> I had to actually call somebody to apologize for having said it. And uh, so I'm oh, apologizing. Oh, I know what it is. I know. I I'm remember. apologizing to I all the listeners. I'm apologizing to all the listeners who oh. heard me say something that I shouldn't have said yesterday About on the a show. About a family member. <laughs> oh, I remember now. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you have to but be really. Okay. You have to watch yourself and be really careful what you say about people because, because, because the words it sounds the... funny and cute at the time, or it yes. just kind of comes out. And, and there's and, no delete and button on the radio. <laughs> You have to be really careful what you say, so I'm not going to repeat it. Um, and it's only there forever. It's <laughs> only there forever. No um, backspace, no no delete, and everybody can can. Dude, this is what Tritto said on this date. But I did have thinking da, 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 da. about it after that because I do try to be very careful about those kinds of things, and I wasn't. And uh, okay, three Hail Marys and four Hour Five. Okay. <laughs> so and, since and, and two since Moseses, I got that, um, <laughs> two Moseses. <laughs> Do two Moseses and a Hail Mary. Since I got that out of the way, I will let you know that Mort is on the phone and he's ready to talk about the contest. Oh, and our top lawyer in the world doesn't know where the building is. Okay. <laughs> God. Uh, Are you okay. listening on the radio? We'll give you directions, blow by yeah, bell, how Peter, to get there. Uh, Peter, if you're on the radio, we'll just tell you, okay? I'll tell you what. <laughs> Mike, can you go meet Peter and drive him here, you know? Um, well, let's get Mort on. I'll call it, yeah. I'll and and uh, I'm, I'm just going to text it. He's got a GPS. So, um, uh, Tom, you're a good, you're a good speller. <laughs> oh, here's more. Is okay or what? <laughs> Wait, say that again. You're a pretty good speller. Is chaos spelled Oh, like yeah, right, exactly. Or what? <laughs> Uh, only, I can't hear him very well. only on Trento Vision is chaos spelled with a capital K <laughs> or not. Um, yeah, the uh, I'm cranking these up. Somehow we're not getting as much as we normally get in here, but that's okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Just no, our no, little no, guys. No. Just our, our little personal. guys. Um, don't, don't mess with the master button. Hi, Mozart. How are you? I'm trying to I'm trying to gain control of our out of control crowd here. But, but Everybody has travel fever. What I was saying earlier was um, we're a little different than the classic talk radio where a caller calls in and you beat the hell out of them and the next one and all that. We, we, um, we carry on our own conversation. Something that's similar is they do it on, on Fox, and we're not copying anybody, understand that. But they do the five. You ever see the five at five? Yeah. Five yeah. people at five. Mm -hmm. And they have, you know, discussion. And, mm -hmm. and the interest level is the viewer – is listening, and usually some of the personalities in there, because they have some on the left, some... We need a liberal in here as part of this ensemble. No, we don't. <laughs> I think the room is crowded already. No, we don't, Tom. No. Yeah, no let's Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang uh, on. Yes, go ahead, Peter. I'm on the air with the... The, the person, Morton. no, um, uh, hang on, Mort. With the person we tout as the top attorney in the state of Florida, <laughs> how could we help you, Peter? Oh, you need to know how to get here. Okay, okay. I'll call him. The, okay, you need. He needs to know the number, folks. And this is the attorney that we are telling everybody to. He left without knowing where he was going, but he would never treat your case like that. Fameinlaw.com. It's it's. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Here, here, here. here Mark's gonna give you the outside the room. They can figure it out, but we don't want to okay. give you. Okay. Meanwhile, the, back the, at uh, Mort. Back at Mort's. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, Tom, I, I, I view your uh, your program. You made reference to the five on Fox. Yes. But I believe your uh, Trento Vision TV is a discounted version, and and I think you're about you gave them about twenty percent discount since there were five. Now you have four. <laughs> oh, there we go. But, we're we're the four. A, um, what what you have is a melange of intelligence and information. I agree. Wow. I agree. You know, we, uh, but 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 we make jihad fun. We, um, you know, you, you 
we're so deeply, as you are, we're so deeply involved in this fight for so many years, and we understand the serious and dramatic and deadly consequences of Islamic Jihad and the fact that people right now would love to blow up you know, every tall building in the United States, kill every Christian, kill every Jew. They're planning it. They're planning it in caves overseas. They're planning it in office buildings here in the United States. Uh, but so once in a while, you gotta just say, okay, you know, you gotta, you gotta enjoy life. Otherwise, you. Uh, Otherwise, you what's jump the off point? The, the, yeah, you jump what are you off trying the... to save yourselves for? Yep, exactly. So we <laughs> like to have a good time uh, and deal. We with make some jihad fun. Stuff. Yes, we but, do. And Mort is going to help us <laughs> illustrate. And, I need the phone, Mark. Yeah. Mort's going to help us illustrate how all of this stuff works. Good. All right. What's the program? And uh, you're going to you're handling this, CJ. <laughs> this is your project. This is your project. Okay, but you just asked him. So. Oh, what's well, yeah? Rhetorical. So let's so let's hear from Mort. What did you have in mind when you proposed this contest to begin with? And then we can okay. talk about some possible topics. I wrote them down from your Facebook suggestions yesterday as possible yes, topics yes, for yes. Uh, Mozart. Yeah. Okay, well, let me give you my, um, my stilted reading version of what I wrote at the bottom of that drawing where you have a bunch of ideas, ideas. Here's the idea. You, as a member of the listening, viewing audience of Trento Vision, are invited to write directly to Tom Trento. Tell him your idea as clearly and concisely as you can. Describe your concept for a political situation, a national security situation, or simply your point of view about an in-the-news issue, and you can do it. Team Trento will make a selection and submit it to me. Uh, I'm more charged. Uh, and it'll be translated into a line art illustration by my very right hand. And, uh, you, you put the question to us, and we'll draw a conclusion for you. Uh, there's no prize other than that. There's no cash, no trips to Hawaii, but an original drawing custom created just for you. So you can submit your entries in three ways. Email to Tom at TrentoVision.tv, the cell phone 561-319-5533, or mail it to Tom Trento, Director of the United West, and I put your address there, 2200 4th Avenue North, number 3, Lake Worth, Florida, 33. Four six one. May I send you a bill for all this? Yeah, I mean you're you're doing you a may, spot but for we us. Won't pay yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It'll go with the rest of the bills. <laughs> It'll go in the bill folder. <clears throat> we can give you some organo gold though. Yeah, we'll let you I, sip I'm, it. Uh, we I, cannot I'm give you the organo gold. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry about I'm that. Working, See? Working on, I'm working on a sign to place over my drawing board that says "Will work for wine." Oh. Oh, okay. Well, that I can. We help will you line with. up with you yeah, on that one. We will line up with you on the wine. We feel that um, Jesus juice, as Michael Jackson used to say, is good for the soul. You know. Well, so we will drink I, I, no wine I invite before everybody, it's time. I invite everybody in the viewing audience to send us their ideas. Keep it keep it um, uh, simple, folks, if you can, and uh, let me make it complicated. But um, uh, everybody has a question. Uh, put that question in the form of a uh, positive idea, and we'll do a drawing for you. Excellent. We already have about four or five uh, entries in just when we first sort of had the um, the soft launch. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, But now we're actually looking for it, and what we'll do, we'll, we'll uh, use our Facebook pages, all of that, too, right. to, um, to generate the interest. And I guess this is a good time to say in a couple of weeks, Mark? I, I just thought of a good one, good question what? to send to somebody. Oh, okay. No, I just thought of a good caption to send them more, but uh, you can't. You, this is like you know, Disney employees can't win vacations to Disney. I'll send it in under an anonymous oh, name, okay, and I okay. won't, you know, and and, I, and I'll and I'll exclude myself from the voting process. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, we're gonna know that that was yours then, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll know that all, one of them is. One of them is. I'll exclude so, from all voting process. But but we'll. But all we have to do with Mark is go. We like this one, and when we see him go, then we'll know it's that one. And maybe, uh, maybe if he does a little, a little dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, this is it, folks. Your your opportunity. Oh, no, just, just, just one thing I'd like to add, if I may. Sure. You may. Uh, okay, put an asterisk there in uh, maybe uh, seventy-two point type, an asterisk that says your satisfaction is not guaranteed. <laughs>
Your satisfaction is not a smart businessman. Your satisfaction is not guaranteed. That's somebody who's been sued a couple of times and didn't have Peter Feynman to defend That's it. Right. That's right. You, get, you get what you pay for, folks. You get what you pay for. All right. Well, we're launching the, uh, what are we going to call this? We, we need a, you know, well, it's, kind of a it's sexy great term. Great idea cartoon contest. What? Say it again. The great idea. The great idea cartoon contest. That's it. Okay. That kind of works. A great idea cartoon contest. Um, not quite American Idol, but uh, you know, it works. The great idea cartoon contest. We can do that. The great idea cartoon conquest. Sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial. <laughs> Sesqu Why don't we call this Sesquicentennial? All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, the viewing audience, listening audience, all you got to do is come up with an idea. Mark, throw something out to give the, the people kind of a tangible handle on what we're talking about here. What, as far as like a cartoon idea? Yeah, yeah, like the thing that you had, because you're not going to win, I'm but not gonna win it throw anyway. it out anyway. Well, like, for example, uh, uh, tell Mort to have an idea of four people uh, standing in line, and one being Brennan, one being uh, uh, Kerry, and the other one being Hegel, Hegel and Obama. And the fourth Four horse, horsemen there, yeah. It, 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 well, three of them, and then the fourth person being... Uh, uh, a guy in a white hood with a KKK outfit on. Oh, it says, hey, President Obama, here are your uh, nominee selections for the next Secretary of Defense. Oh, I, have okay. a, I have a title for that already. Are you okay, ready? I don't quite see it, but uh, All right, I mean, what's the title? I have, I have the title for it already. He, he sees it. What's yeah. the title? Okay. It's Obama's Nomin' Nuts. <laughs> See? That's, See? That's and then, and that's how it goes back and forth. Uh, and, and, uh, further by illustration, we're illustrating now for the listening and viewing audience how you can uh, have a, um, a personalized cartoon drawn by Mozart, who is a distinguished artist. People may not know that, think that we're joking around here. What You, mm -hmm. you were commissioned to do a, a, a cartoon book for the... For the uh, that sad place at 1600, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we had the uh, the dubious distinction, although it is it was it was a, a distinction, of um, uh, being commissioned to do the first official White House coloring book uh, several years ago, and um, it it was it was quite successful. That was during the Clinton administration, uh, and. Um, uh, it was a lot of fun. They printed 10,000, and I never heard from them again. <laughs> but, but they were all sold out, and uh, it was uh, it was sold in all the official gift shops uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, and in the little gift shop under the back stairs of the White House itself. So it, it got some play. Uh, we did some... Um, uh, some book uh, book signings and uh, it, was, it was it was great fun. And I, and I've seen a copy. It's an oversized book. What's the, what are the dimensions? Uh, it's eleven by fourteen. Eleven by fourteen. The cover, the cover was uh, in full color, but of course the the inside pages were all color. black and white. Yeah, you color them. So I, nearly, and, and they had themes so I guess that, if there was an Obama administration coloring book. It, it would already be colored for you because why should you have to do why all that work yourself? Yes, yes of course. <laughs> and you get money too when you buy. Well, it. here's another idea. What you could throw up have uh, is have Ahmadinejad in front of the Zionist, uh, no more Zionist stand as he's doing his mm -hmm. little speech, and off the side, David Duke standing next to a guy in a turban you're going. Hooked on, you're hooked on the Ku Klux Klan. For well, but no, I'm just saying because that have David Duke standing next to a guy in a turban saying you know we're not that far apart after all <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that could work what i what something that pops in my mind for the sake of illustration for the audience you can't use this one or you can't use marks too is uh president obama uh flying into hawaii and then standing on on the stairs of air force one speaking to the throngs of poor people that have come to welcome him and uh, he's 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 identifying with their uh, their impoverished <laughs> lifestyle. He can feel their pain, and you know he could spend a little bit of time before he has to get to the golf course. You know, so the 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 irony of this guy living as royalty, but all his nitwit subjects, uh, you know, seeing him as uh, the their great hero, and as they're throwing out cake. Yeah, yeah, throwing out <laughs> cake or something. 
<laughs> in any event, you guys can you get the idea. You can come up with uh, different ideas. All right, Morg, anything else on the contest? Uh, no, I just I'm looking forward to uh, to everyone's thoughts. Yeah, so are we. It's going to be very interesting, and I think we'll uh, fire it up in Facebook and Twitter and all those different things. Thank you, to it. Thank you, Morty. Thank you, Mort. We'll see you. you. All right. Perfect. 33 Perfect. minutes. 33 minutes past 3 o'clock on the, what is today? The 9th of January, 213. And whenever I say that, you know what it's ready time for. It's time for the weather inside. The weather inside is 75 degrees, beautifully. And, uh, you know, it's warmer than it's supposed to be. What is it? Everybody is talking about it. It's 81 oh, degrees. 81 degrees. This is summer weather. 81 <laughs> degrees in beautiful downtown Boca Raton. I tell you, promises were made. Promises were broken. It's supposed to be winter. In winter time. Winter. I have in my little phone here, I have uh, places I've traveled to. New York. Somebody guess the temperature in New York. 64. Close. Reversed. 46. How about Delray Beach, 81? How about Amsterdam? Amsterdam, the Netherlands. 32. 30, yeah, no, no, 30 in the 30s. 45. It's 45 <gasps> there. 30s tomorrow, though. Uh, Jerusalem. Uh, that's 55. 45. Don Hague. The Hague, where the world the court is. 41. Orlando. Your hometown. 79. 79 77. Yeah. Philadelphia. Uh, just like New York. 42. 48. Washington. Just like New York. Nork. <laughs> <laughs> what exit? Los Angeles. Uh, LA is probably 75 right now. 64. Is it? Oh, Chicago. Oh. Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Chicago is... I was there about a year ago. It was 17 degrees at yeah. night, so it's going to be... That's uh, actually nice. 52. Isn't Lynchburg. Why do I have Lynchburg in here? Oh, Jack Daniels. Yeah, and then heaven. I have heaven in here. What's the temperature in heaven? Perfect. It's always 72 uh, in heaven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always 72 in heaven. So, And the traffic is what, Mike? What's uh, going on with the traffic? Traffic is, is going on. All right. The traffic is going the on. A visible mic. All right, we have two camera shoots here today, 36 minutes after 3 o'clock. And um, as I said, my computer lost quite a bit of material, so we're just winging it today. We have nothing else to go. No, we have a lot of stuff to do. But uh, we, we wanted to establish the Mozart. Anybody remember the name? The yes, Geico. The, the Geico. Great Idea Cartoon Contest. The, the, Geico, idea. the Geico Contest. The Great Idea Cartoon <laughs> We do need a mascot or something yeah. for it. Oh, we got a chicken. Oh, the chicken. <laughs> There's the chicken. That's perfect. This is the chicken that has traveled with us around the world. Here comes the chicken. Mike, can you, can you get the chicken here, Mike? Oh, this thing is nasty. Oh, God. This has been in so many suitcases, so many TSA hands. They're going, what's inside of this? They're looking at it. Going, oh, God. What is in your chicken? Oh, what is in your chicken? <laughs> Feel this thing. No, it is don't so give me good. the chicken after it's you just handled it. Here, have some sanitizer. <laughs> you can't desanitize the chicken. I never use this. I'm you need to use it, it now. I, n I have never used this stuff in my life, but I'm using it now. You guys are such wusses. That has to go in a wash machine, that thing. That thing's been washed. I should, I should, I should, I have some friends that I Throw can. Throw it here. That would Give kill it Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nasty. Um, that has been in so many beds, that thing. Okay, no, then. No, <laughs> what happens is when we're all staying somewhere, somehow Mark inserts that in somebody's bed at the pillow or whatever. He doesn't something. short sheet the bed. He just slips in <laughs> a that crazy chicken. chicken in there. Oh, God. And we're, we, Claire's uh, been the latest recipient. And uh, we really do. Mike, are you traveling with him this weekend? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Better watch out. 37 minutes past 3 o'clock. Trento Vision, where we do national security. Security radio and uh, some shtick. Yeah, and some shtick. <laughs> but we have uh, serious issues to deal with today, and we'll yeah. tell you about those in a second. Do we have the uh, clean dishes, organic? Go? We have anything set up? No. no. We have our new fancy computer that doesn't have all the do the, the stuff in it yet. Organigo, and we got to talk to them today, so we'll give oh, them a call. We have to talk to them. Yeah, today. afterwards, okay. I think. Uh, here's a sample of Organo Gold coffee. It's actually this one is Cafe Latte. <sighs> 
this is what I'm drinking right now. And you see how fun I am when I drink <laughs> this? <laughs> you too could be fun if you drink Organo Gold. Don't need gold. whiskey. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Um, we have to take pictures. Remember, Tim wanted pictures for the uh, the new website. You were going to announce that. A couple of weeks, we're going to have a new website, right? Yep. And we're also going to be uh, doing some very cool stuff on the Tea Party community. We're, there it's the teapartycommunity.com. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Now it's actually really cool. It is very uh, cool. We were on it last night yeah, testing it. And it's got some neat stuff on it. And we're, we're going to be able to sh stream the Trento Vision show. Oh, that's on, right. On the uh, Tea Party community, and we're actually going to have a big launch of it, and it'll be pretty cool. Wow. We're going to have not a whole day. we for that, are we? No. Okay, just making sure. You know, Why do you think you we keep plugging are... TeaPartyCommunity.com the whole time? Okay, yeah. I'm just making sure, you know, you guys, you like to spread the money around. So. You know, Speaking of money, careful. it takes money to bring you this information. It takes money to bring you the. Um, what did Mort say? We uh, not not this thing here, but other stuff. We uh, we bring great we bring great information, but we actually do. I, I mean, I get emails. You guys don't even see all of them. I get emails from all over the world saying, oh, you know what? Why am I explaining it when I can read one that I just saw as I was restarting up my computer uh, on my Facebook page? This says. Uh, Nancy says I read I read Barry Rubin's article, which we're going to read in a second. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we'll watch the show today. I'm so happy I found you guys. Wish I could be on your team. Not only do you mm. present cutting-edge news and events and interview interesting people, but you're having a great time in the process. It's the kind of job I would love to have. <laughs> uh, thank you for being the watchmen on the wall. And that's the generic watchmen. Thank you, Nancy. That was very nice. Did she send her picture, too? Is she looking for um, really? You know what? I are we the four watchmen of the apocalypse? We're the watchmen. Then Debbie wrote, great topic. I'm looking forward to what I what I wrote was today we were, you know, I I, I post the email we send out every day. Mm -hmm. Debbie said, Great topic. Looking forward to the show today. This has been my passion for many years. Tell CJ I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt her feelings. I don't know what that means. But if you know, don't Who is it? Debbie. Debbie. I'll let you see during the break. Okay. Uh, Debbie is thinks she, she hurt your who feelings. Said the lady laughs too much oh that was probably what it is yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. in all fairness in all fairness she's right <laughs> <laughs> okay. you do have a unique laugh and um, all you have to do is this mic management here's all you have to do see Debbie what you started Debbie all you have to do is this when you feel that laugh coming on you have to just back off back there probably go down to Deerfield someplace and uh, and everything will be fine. Take the 10 to the 101. <laughs> Excuse me one second. Excuse me, everybody. Yes, Peter Feynman. <laughs> if I laugh and I don't make any noise, uh, we, does it count? We, we, we push you as the top attorney on the face of the earth, okay? <laughs> so... He still can't get. It. All right, I'll go out. I'll get even. Dixie Highway, come on! You a, Are you, you got kidding a big, me? You got a big bar. You know, we set the bar high. So, <laughs> all right, we'll see you at five after four sharp. <laughs> Ask him how he takes his okay, coffee. Okay, he likes bars, but the only one he ever passed was the Florida bar. <laughs> so he's a comedian too. Uh, Goodbye. See you later. <laughs> bring your books up. We need your books. Bring yeah, your we books. need the books. Yeah, bring your books. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. You guys warm the audience up for me. Right? Oh, they're warm. They're warm. So, how come I only have one here? All right, Tom Trento with CJ, Mark, Mike, Peter Feynman on his way. He's listening on the radio, which is a good place to be listening. Uh, 342. All right, the subject today is the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse. And a couple of people wrote me, you shouldn't be talking about stuff like that. You know, they actually they, they said those are serious topics and. If you don't handle them properly, I said, come on, we're waking up the world here. Well, Relax. actually, the topic is the four horsemen of the American foreign policy apocalypse. Yes, Barry Rubin laid it out carefully. Barry yeah. Rubin is a phenomenal... Do you know how he's doing, by the way? Um, uh, he has cancer yeah. that's public, and uh, he is writing again, so I think that's he's... Good. Uh, that's good. That's good to we, hear. We, uh, we had a, a, a wonderful evening almost two years ago, almost a year ago, am I saying two years ago? 
two months. Uh, about a year ago, we were in uh, Tel Aviv on the ocean or on the Mediterranean. Beautiful night in February, 60s, 70s. There was this cool little uh, bar. Remember that place? Um, the one we went to oh, yeah, every yeah, night. Right. <laughs> Where at? No, uh, uh, the, the one right by where we stayed at the hotel. Right down the street. Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, Israel. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we made contact with Barry. And there was about maybe 10 of us. Well, there were 10 of us, not about. And uh, Barry came over one evening and sat down with us. Sort of a, It reminded me of, um, of how Plato and Aristotle and the great philosophers would teach. You know, they, everybody would just sit wherever and have discussions with the people that knew stuff. And he's one of the world's top uh, Middle East experts. And it was very interesting. There was, there was people there that recognized me and him. And they said, is that, you know, they introduced themselves. Is that Barry Rubin? We said, yeah, could, could we? And a whole other group came in. Right. And, you know, we just threw questions out and everything. And um, uh, he's one of the guys you got to read when you're trying to analyze in a dispassionate uh, but effective way the machinations, the chaotic activity, the uh, the uh, complexities of the of the Israeli government. I mean, that's a complex entity, you know. Yeah, we think we have some politics yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. They got thirty five parties all vying to run the country. Or as Golda Meir once said, um, one of the U.S. presidents said, "Oh man, I have uh, two hundred you know million people to uh, that I have to to lead." And, uh, and, and and she said, oh, yeah, wow, that's that's pretty good. She goes, I have three million prime ministers I have to lead. You know, um, in Israel, everybody thinks they're a prime minister. So uh, Barry wrote this article. We'll introduce it now. Then we'll get into it with Peter a little bit. Um, and here we go. The, uh, the subject matter is... Where the United States government is going regarding foreign policy, in particular foreign policy as it relates to the Middle East, even more particularly as it relates to Israel. And in the second term where, you know, he didn't win by that much, this president. Won by a couple no, of million votes. No, it's not like he had a landslide There was no landslide. He like was that. 10 million no. votes less than four years earlier. No. and. And you can and easily I'm, fudge that many votes mm -hmm. for sure. And I'm still questioning the figures how five people could show up at 900 votes. And 900 out. votes. Yeah. So five, uh, five registered 900 votes. But you know votes what? Turnout. He is. He's an amazing guy, our president, because he won, and that's all that matters. It's a W column, and he is ru ruling the country uh, in in a um, quasi. Uh, monarchical manner imperial yeah 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 absolutely so um he has selected a team the whole cabinet is changing um hillary doesn't want to be there anymore though she's going to have to testify now uh timothy geithner he's blowing out a dodge oh yeah all the rats are getting off the ship you would think here's your opportunity to be on the cabinet the top 10 12 15 people closest to the most powerful man in the world you would think you want to you would want to ride that ship to the end, you know, to the. But why would you jump off? Well, because he never attends cabinet meetings, so they're not actually that close to him. Yeah, the um, <laughs> the you can't do that one. The uh, I mean, good the, grief! He doesn't go to his daily intelligence briefings. You think he holds cabinet no, meetings the, and so meets the, with these people? The fact of the matter is, they're not happy. They're getting out of dodge, and and we understand that. So he he has. Um, nominated three individuals and plus himself are four and several people have uh, started referring to these as the uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse and then barry rubin wrote a very interesting article so who's the red horse black yeah horseman? i know i know you gotta go into all the details <laughs> noxious nominations the four horsemen of the american foreign policy apocalypse four people are the president obviously and then he selected John Brennan as the uh, head of the CIA, director of the CIA. Then he selected um, uh, John Curry as the what? What's Curry going to be? Secretary of State. Sex State. And then uh, Chuck Hagel, former uh, senator, Republican senator, as SecDef, Secretary of Defense. So Barry starts out. And uh, we'll get through this, and then we'll probably take a break then. Barry says, and he has a very 
uh, parochial way of writing. He doesn't write in, in, in any highbrow manner. It's really readable. He says, I did a lot of soul searching before writing my latest article. And, uh, of course, I believed every word of it, but it would depress readers too much. Would it be too grim? Then he goes on to say, well, maybe U.S. policy will just muddle through for the next four years without any disasters. Maybe because there's no superpower in the world, you know, everything will kind of keep an equilibrium. Perhaps that's true. Yet within hours after publishing an article that he wrote, and the article was, after the fall, what do you do when you conclude America is temporarily or permanently kaput, right? Yeah. That's an article he wrote. So after he wrote that, he concluded that he had not been too pessimistic. The cause of the reaction uh, is the, what do you want, Mark? Oh, uh, <laughs> I thought you were waving to, to come in. Very the um, the somebody's gonna get him a bathing suit or something to put on. He's uh, he's dressed in his. I because uh, I saw the governor today. I was with the oh, all right. We want to hear about that. Okay. Um, he says uh, within hours after the publication of that, he concluded it was not too pes pessimistic, because the reaction is that the breaking story that not only will John Kerry be the new Secretary of State. And not only will the equally reprehensible former Senator Chuck Hagel be Secretary of Defense, but that John Brennan, the president's counterterrorism advisor, will become CIA chief. And Barry Rubin, who knows this stuff inside, I was going, oh, my word, what is going on? About two years ago, Barry writes, I joked that if Kerry would become Secretary of State, it's time to think about heading to the fallout shelter in New Zealand. This trio in power which along with Obama himself could be called the four horsemen of the apocalypse for U.S. foreign policy and might require an interstellar journey. Oh, man. Let me yeah. stress, he says, this is not really just about Israel. At the end of Obama's second term, U.S.-Israel relations will probably be roughly where they are now. Palestinian strategy, both the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, has left the U.S. no diplomatic or peace process operation. The problem is one of U.S. interests in the Middle East, not just Israeli interests. He says you can read about these three guys elsewhere, uh, and we'll get into some of that. He says, but their views are horrible. This is especially true on Middle Eastern issues, but how good are they in anything else? True, they're all hostile to Israel. All three of them are hostile to Israel. This is an Israeli analyst who does this stuff for 30 years and and he is not a right wing guy i think i think he's a uh, i think he has dual citizenship i think he's a he's a liberal democrat is what he is was they're all hostile to israel but this isn't the first time people who think that way held high office far worse is they're all pro islamist that's the yeah. issue that that bothers me a lot that's it. because that's a huge issue right? because we have structures in place where you, you can only hurt israel to a certain degree without really raising the ire of a lot of people, but you can advance the pro-Islamic jihadi position tremendously. What Obama is saying is this, my policy of backing Islamists has worked so well, including in Egypt, that we need to do even more. <laughs> All those analogies to 1930s appeasement are an understatement. Nobody in British leadership said, I have a great idea, let's help fascist regime regimes take power and then they'll be our friends and become more moderate. That's the equivalent of what John Brennan, yeah. the uh, uh, head of intelligence, the national security advisor to the president, yeah. has well, been Well, actually, doing. there were a lot of powers back in 1938 trying to help the fascists take power. I mean, including the Kennedys and a, and a lot of other people. They're all stupid people. And I'm uh, pushing a deadline uh, time here. They're all stupid. They're all stupid people. And Barry doesn't talk like this. But he says, they're all stupid people. Some friend said I shouldn't write this because it's a subjective judgment and sounds mean-spirited. But honestly, it's true, folks. They're all stupid people. Nobody would ever say that about their predecessors, Hillary Clinton, Robert Gates, and David Petraeus. They were intelligent and accomplished. But these guys are simply not in that category. Smart people can make bad judgment. Regular people with common sense often make bad judgments less often. But stupid Arrogant people with terrible ideas are a disaster. But stupid, arrogant people with terrible ideas are a disaster. Oh, my word. That's where we are with this. That's where we 
and That's where we got to leave off. We're going to leave off with that, and then we're going to bring Peter in. Yes. And he's going to tell us there's hope. There's hope and change in the future, aren't you? Well, I don't know. It's okay <laughs> not to know and know that you don't know. Okay. <laughs> but to think that you know and you don't really know, that's a disaster. Oh, that's right. man. But stay tuned, folks, for that's right. There you go. For it's that. Be and very um, you have a you have a quick Sharia yeah, it's thing. It's a very quick Sharia uh, thing, yeah. Mike. Here, let's let's hit a quick Sharia deal here. Well, we don't. Do we? Let's say uh, we can push it here. Islamic law certified, codified by the Feet Council of North America. Yeah, it says that. that the Antichrist in the Four Horsemen Apocalypse is Ibn al Dajjal of Messiah Israel and is alive and president <laughs> among the Jews. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> right here, Islamic yeah. codified law. Yeah. Oh, we got to look that up. It's so, right here. He did I know it did. It it's right here. No, no, no. But, but the, the reason why they're writing I, that. So, hey, it's law. It doesn't have so to have the reason. Antichrist. I'll, I'll Wikipedia it. They were Antichrist, according to Sharia law, is alive and well in Tel Aviv someplace. <laughs> Stay tuned for that one. We'll be right back.